Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you're watching this transmission. It is I, Mike Martins, bringing you another very special episode of Trends in the Housing Market. Thanks for joining me tonight, people. Thanks one, thanks all. I'm trying to get a stream alive here, guys. I'm having a lot of problems getting a stream going on here. And um, I don't know what it is. I start getting viewers, and then I, I, they get cut off, and I start getting viewers, and then they get cut off, and then they start getting viewers, and they get cut off. So I start building a decent uh, um, viewership, and then I lose everybody. So it's not, it's not they're not making it easy. Um, um, YouTube's not making it easy. I, I don't know why. It just it is what it is. I'm having a really tough time here uh, getting this thing off the ground. So let's start off with trends in the housing market. I don't know what happened. I left the house for a few days. I come back, and my internet just is not working. I don't know. I, I can't even get it moving. I can't get anything going. So if you're in the comments, let me know if you could hear me right. Let me know if everything's okay. If you're in the comments there, please let me know if you guys could hear me and there's no problems and interference or anything. Go ahead and add me on Skype. We're going to have open lines tonight. It's Mike Martins 1980. I like some first-time callers to call in that actually could... Uh, give us a little bit of light or shed some light. Good, you can hear me. Good. Dumb Dada in the house. Thank you very much. Let me see if I could get my Skype open here. So, guys, don't forget to join me on Skype. Mike Martin's 1980. I need you guys to call. So, guys, housing show tonight. I don't care about Obama. I don't care about anything else. I need to. We need to cover this massive housing crisis we're in. And, um,. We need to seriously cover what's happening right now because things are not looking good. Uh, so let's go over a few articles here, guys. So um, there was one I did that actually was um, – I didn't add it to, uh, to a thing. Here it is. Housing to skyrocket to $3 million. So I was in the hospital when I did this one for you guys, and it's a very interesting one. Um, it's them – here, I'll even open the article fresh for you guys here. Home prices to skyrocket. To 3.2 – I think it was 3.2 million. Fresh article. It was a fresh article that was just thrown up there. Um, GTA. Oh, I can't find it now. Yeah, I can't find it. Uh, the article was basically that uh, housing to set the skyrocket and it's a big one. It's uh, they actually put this article out there. Let's let's hear what I got to say here. YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. I'm here in the bathroom in the hospital. Everyone's asleep. I don't want to wake up all night. Send me a one liner when you talk trends. Let's talk housing tomorrow night. Let me know what you guys think. But let's continue this off. It's by Narcity. And what does it say? The average cost of a detached house will likely be $3.5 million by 2026. So it's by Narcity News. Let's find it. So let's find it here. Here it is. It's from a few days ago. Here it is. Okay, guys, I wanted to open this one up. So it's, it, it ties into this video that I made when I was in the bathroom in the washroom uh, in the hospital. Average cost of a detached Toronto house will be likely 3.5. I thought it was 3.2. 3.5 million by 2026. Guys, these people are living in delusionalized matter. I don't, I don't even think they're living on this planet. I don't even know what to tell you. The average cost of a detached house. So in seven years, prices are going to triple. Yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have what's his face, um, what's his name there, um, 
Kevin Thompson. There he is. You're going to have Kevin Thompson probably saying, hey, you know what? Mike, you're right. This article's right. This is very factual. So, so you're going to start seeing a lot of these articles popping up everywhere. And they're going to be actually – and this thing got almost 5,000 shares on social media. So this goes to show right now that people are out there trying to get the good word out, you know. But when it's a crash or people are defaulting on their mortgages, it doesn't even get 30 shares. It's like people want to keep that under hush-hush, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Toronto housing market is already already seriously unaffordable. So imagine what property taxes would be on $3.5 million. I think you're looking at thirty five, forty thousand a year in property tax. So yeah, good luck with that. So I wanted to do that and debunk that. That's a pile of poop right there. Let's go next. Then the next story that I covered. Oh, let me put that in my YouTubers. in my. Um, let me throw that in my thing, uh, under housing. Oh, it's in the wrong channel. Never mind. I'm in, I'm in my backup channel, guys. Next week I'll be out of YouTube prison. We'll be using the main channel for streaming again. Um, this is a really good video, guys, that I covered. While so why the housing good. crash will be different, we covered it here on the show because back in the day, uh, uh, housing markets and well, any market in general is meant and set to run on autopilot. Okay, these are meant to, uh, it just doesn't work, and I'm having a lot of trouble just getting anything off the ground right now. Okay, this crash is going to be different because there's too much meddling. There's too much uh, uh, government meddling and, and, and uh, uh, banking meddling into stuff with interest-only mortgages. And, um, you know, anyways, Dumb Dada says, must be Rogers. Yeah, I'm with Rogers. It's absolute garbage. I don't use TELUS only because of what happened. Um, I got a cell phone from TELUS two days, three days after. It just... It was a no, a no two. It was a no two, so it stopped working, and the no two started stopped working. I had a lot of problems with it. I tried to take it back. They said I had to pay the eight hundred and ninety dollar contract off. They sent it to collections. I just paid it off right away once it went to collections. I've never bought anything, held anything, or kept anything from Telus. So, anyways, I am losing. I am losing bandwidth here big time. I'm going to try my best to do this show. I'm, I don't know what to do. Um, video output severely low. Much viewers need to, uh, yeah. So is live stream working for you guys? Are you guys seeing me okay there? It's down in Kevin Thompson's area. Yeah, some people have to refresh. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the internet. I'm going to have to call them. I'm, I'm like, I mean, I pay my bill every month. Is there anything you guys could do for me? Okay. All right. It looks like it's back up and running. Uh, then I did Australian in Australian serious financial trouble. So you guys heard, heard this from me here uh, first. Okay, guys. Here's the deal. And this is why I've been following Australia, okay? You guys pay very close attention to this. I'm not sure how many other cities might be in line with Australia. But... Right now, with the debt service ratio that the typical Australian family has, household debt, personal debt, lines of credit. Are you ready for this, guys? And I put, I brought it up in a video. If Australia moved their rates to 0%, they'll still fall apart. They have no way to, 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 they have no way to survive if they move their rates to 0%. That's how bad it is in Australia. Australia is going to be lowering rates next week. Uh, sorry, in the next rate call. Sorry, the next rate call. And it, it looks pretty bad. Ooh, pretty Asian women seeking single man and merit. Woo, sexy. I love these pop-ups every like two minutes. So guys, even if Australia moved its rates to 0%, I don't know what they're going to do down under. And that's why I've been following them for many years is because I have no idea. Oh, by the way, I want to thank uh, Kevin, my man Kevin. You guys don't know it, and no, it's not Kevin Thompson. But my man Kevin has a bit of my video footage, guys. To pay attention to this, sent me my video footage 
from some of my old videos ago that got deleted, so you guys know I'm not lying. There's a bit of music on it. He put a bit of music because he was doing a remix on, on, on Housing Crash. So look at this, guys. This is my old real estate. So Sydney, Vancouver. I don't even have Toronto in there because it didn't even rally by then. Watch this. Sydney, Toronto, housing crash of 47% by 2016. Wow. Was I really off? Look how off I was on the percentages. I thought it was going to be. Look at this. Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, debt prison. Wow. That was a classic video, too, I did here. Look at that. Yep, yeah, believe it or not. Look at that. Uh, oversupply coming in 2016. I was short. I was so short by two years. I knew there was an oversupply coming on the market. And supply versus demand illusion. I knew there was an oversupply. I just didn't know when it was going to come with all the government propping and all the government um, and the bank involvements and all this Mickey Mousing of shit and screwing people's lives up. Yeah. So buddy sent me this. I couldn't believe it. I'm like these are these videos were deleted a long time ago, guys. Uh, look, Sydney, Vancouver, Auckland, and London. Massive housing correction. Spring of 2017. I'm still talking about this in Q2 or Q3 in 2016. So yeah, guys, uh, markets are supposed to be running on autopilot, and we went in and started jigging things around and moving things around and guess what happened we screwed up now we created the great monster of frankenstein and we have no way how to contain the beast let's keep going let's see if i have any more here yeah but he was putting together a compilation so he sent me this yeah he's putting together something so he said i could use this for a project for a project I'm working on. So that's what I'm going to do. It looks really good. I want to thank him like oh so very much for uh Oh, somebody's calling in. Oops, hold on. Call back. Call back on the on the on the computer. I, I answered it on my phone. I'm sorry. Call back on the computer whoever that was. All right, let's go back to here. So I wanted to show that to you guys, my good old days of putting together, my good old days of my old videos. I just can't believe, look how old this one is too. Sydney, Vancouver housing crash of 47% by 2016. This was in 2015. Oh, this is when I took this serious and actually had a proper place to do my videos and stuff. And then everything got deleted and I got, I lost, I lost, um... Whoever called back, can you please call back right now? I'm sorry, I answered the phone on my on my phone. I was supposed to answer it here on the computer. I'm sorry. Can you call back whoever called in, please, please, please? I'm sorry. Okay. So Steve the Plumber's here too, STP. And whoever call in, please call in back. Okay, average cost of a detached house in Toronto will be $3.5 million by 2026. People would have believed this six months ago or seven, eight months ago uh, when all those real estate agents were coming on YouTube and saying, If you don't know now, you'll never own anything. You'll be completely bought out of the market. Now they're saying, yeah, if you bought in Yale Town five years ago, you'd be okay. And then another six months, they're like, if you bought in Yale Town ten years ago, you would be okay. Then they go, if you bought in Yale Town 25 years ago, you'd be okay today. All right, whoever called, can you please call back? Can you please call back? Can you please call back? I'm really sorry. I answered the phone on my phone. I should have. Let me put this thing over here so I don't get into any trouble. Okay, guys, really, 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 really. Now, this is a very important article, guys. I need to read this in full. How housing affordability is getting worse even though prices are falling. How is this even possible? So, guys, we know that prices are going down. And I need to explain this for you, uh, for, uh, for you guys. It's um, So conventional affordability, 
Wisdom states that falling prices should improve housing affordability, right? You would think, hey, guys, prices are going down. Now we can buy, right? Well, let's see what this has to say. Though the logic is appealing, Canadian housing markets paint quite a different picture with housing affordability worsening even though the average house prices have fallen. Unlike many other asset classes, housing markets are complex and heterogeneous with no two home homes or buyers being identical. As a result, the housing market does not necessarily follow the typical wisdom of the markets. Well, it goes into what I'm saying of all the government propping and all the Mickey Mousing they're doing, right? Recent housing market data research revealed that affordability eroded in Canada even as prices have tumbled. The reason for this anomaly is the housing affordability only uh, partially depends on prices. Regulatory changes also play a large role in determining housing affordability. A report of the RBC Economic Research viewed that housing affordability in the third quarter of 2018 and concluded it was getting less affordable to own a home in Canada. Wow, we took a team of researchers to figure that out. Whoa, let's 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 give these guys a medal and slap it on their chest. Let's keep going here. The report tracks the income required to cover the cost of owning the average home with 25% down when compared to the, to the third quarter of 2015. The qualifying income had increased significantly by the third quarter of 2018. The Vancouver, for instance, the income required to cover ownership of the average home was 211000 in 2018, up to 127 three years ago. The qualifying, so you need to buy an average home, the income required was $211,000 a year. So that's the type of income you needed um, in 2018, $211,000. And we did our own calculations and sheets and all our crap on our own here on the show and we showed you guys to buy a typical six seven hundred thousand dollar house you need roughly two hundred thousand down with the new stress test uh in 2018 up from 127 so uh a few years ago it was 127,000 um uh, 127,000 a year i think it's a lot easier to make 127,000 a year to making 211,000 a year uh, the qualifying income in Toronto was 187,000 in 2018. That's almost 200 large in Toronto compared to 103,000 in 2015. In fact, qualifying income has increased in all large and small housing markets across Canada. So there's the shared total of uh, homes sold. Here it is in 2015. You got an okay market 2016, and then and then you start getting like pretty much taken off the taking off the bar chart here because things are getting cut in half and starting getting cut and uh, less and less homes are selling and it's becoming tougher and tougher to uh, um, to get into the markets, especially when you're not making $210,000 per year. And that's why police officers and, and people working as nursing, I, I was at the hospital all week with my wife and we had a baby girl, everything's okay. Now, our problem, uh, the problem at the hospital was I went to my hospital here in town. They built a new wing. It's big. It's clean. It's beautiful. It's a nice hospital. It's state of the art. We go in. There's nobody working there. There's just no doctors. So my hospital now is a transit unit. So you go into the hospital. They look at you, assess you, and say, okay, we got to send you to this hospital, and you got to go there now because we can't do nothing for you here. And that's what happened, and that's what's happening, and that's becoming a major problem, right? One big reason for higher qualifying income required in 2018 was the increase in housing prices since 2015, a rise that was most uh, pronounced in the greater Vancouver and, Tor and, and Toronto. Qualifying incomes therefore increased by 34000 in Vancouver and 27000 in Toronto since 2015 as a result of higher prices, the RBC report estimated. By rising prices were not the only factor, even without their impact, the qualifying income would have climbed considerably because of the stress test that required the uh, the borrowers to qualify at a higher interest rate than uh, the contracted rate as of January 2018. The RBC report estimated that the increase in the qualifying income due to the stress test was almost the same 
as the result from the increase in the house price. So there you go. So prices go up, the stress test goes up, it becomes a lot more and more and more complicated. The stress test raised qualifying income threshold from 36,000 and in Vancouver, 27,000 in Toronto. So we're going back to earlier in the year in 2015, right? So here it is. However, the low priced homes in 2018 declined from 13 to 9%. A uh, 31% drop, which took place when the, the the nominal average home price in Toronto declined from 822,000 in 2017 to 787,000 in 2018, and 766,000 in February 2019. So if you're in Toronto and you held back from buying, you're starting to save. You're starting to, like even though you could have bought, let's say you could have bought, let's say you could walk in there, get the stress test done, get everything, appraisal fits, your income fits. And let's say you were in a coma for six months. So you just saved yourself $70,000 being in a coma. So the, the further away you, you are from this market and the longer it takes you to get back in. Uh, and um, again, the conventional wisdom would have dictated an increase rather than a decline in the share of low priced homes that attract uh, low to moderate income households. So if prices do go down, uh, buying, um, the buying, the buying is going to be a lot more difficult to buy. Unlike in the United States, uh, in Canada, unfortunately, Canada doesn't have this because it's a very, very heavily communist country. How it works in the United States was they email you a newsletter if they know you're buying, and you could just buy a foreclosed property from the bank for seventy grand, fifty grand. But in Canada, they don't do that because life might get easier for you and your family. So God forbid they send out newsletters and find out what's bank, what's owned by the banks. It's very complicated for us to find. In the U.S., oh man, they send you newsletters in the mail. Hey, this, 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 this property near your house foreclosed, forty-five grand for this four-bedroom house. Are you interested? Forty-five grand, take it or leave it. You know. So we don't have that in Canada, unfortunately, because of the communist uh, uh, regime we're in right now. It's making it very hard for people to get ahead. Australia slowdown housing crash hit consumer confidence in March, says survey. Well, I got some news for people down in Australia. It hit con consumer confidence years ago. People don't have money. People are running out of money, right? So Australia right now is saying that consumer sentiment fell 4.8% in March, unwinding 4.3%. Uh, in February and right now there's a, a gloom and doom and slowdown in their 1.9 trillion dollars economy speaking of that let me see if I could get Andrew Baker on the line my man Andrew I hope he's watching the show I need to have this guy on the show let's see where he is uh, where is he I need this guy on my show this guy's a brilliant um on the show and he uh, I've been I told him he's gonna come on the show today there he is let me see if I could call him hopefully there he goes got a Skype on probably busy he's probably tied up somewhere i really want to get him on the show to give us a little bit of uh what's happening in the landscape down under kind of important because guys we got to tune into to australia because it's so important because i think australia is going to be the tipping point of this whole entire housing crash it's everything's pointing to australia for some bizarre reason they're even they're even deleting my videos my housing videos from australia too 
from here. Here, I'm not making this up anymore. Look at this. See, look at this old video, guys. Some old real footage here. Look at this. Sydney, Vancouver housing crash of 47% by 2016. I'm, this was in 2015, and I already knew housing was severely overvalued. Look at this. U, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, debt prison. And this was, I think this was, oh, November 11, 2015. Wow, look at this. Taking me back to the good old days. Look at that. I look so much younger there. Uh, oversupply coming in 2016. I was wrong. I forecasted it. It's oversupply in late 2018, early 2019. I was three years off. You know why? All the government propping. Supply and demand is an illusion. I've This video got taken down too. So Buddy's making a compilation for me of all my videos he's doing for me. He actually downloaded they actually downloaded, he actually downloaded all my old videos for some reason. He kept them. And he had them on a backup hard drive and he messaged me and he said, Mike, I know you're complaining about your videos being deleted, especially from Australia. I go, okay, do you know where they are? He's like, yeah, I have them on a backup hard drive somewhere. I got to find them for you. Actually, you and a couple of other people, I saved their their stuff, right? So Darius, uh, Gary, I can't play another YouTube video on my YouTube because they might flag my channel down. So I might not be able to play this. Yeah, I don't know if I could play this. This is sitting news. Okay, I could play this. I don't know. You know what? It's off their YouTube channel, bud. I cannot. I cannot roll this on my channel. Uh, it might. It might. Yeah. You know what? I'll. I'll roll. I'll roll it. I just don't want to get um, flagged for it because it's another YouTube uh, video, right? So they'll flag it immediately. Um. Okay, um, household debt worries uh, mounting for Canadians. All right, this is the video here. Yeah, if this video is everywhere, I, it's going to be... I don't know if I could... Uh, if I could use this uh, in my video without it getting flagged. Toronto households are on average carrying more than double their incomes and debt as of last fall. Statistics Canada says that means a household with $50,000 of after-tax income is carrying more than $100,000 of debt. StatsCan is going to release the latest debt figures on Thursday. Equifax is also saying that that number of people failing to pay their debts went up at the end of 2018 and says it's likely to become the norm this year. So one in five Canadians with debt are expecting to have to sell some or all of their assets to just keep up with their payments this year. Yep. And what have I been saying to you guys? What have I been preaching to you guys for the last, I don't know, how many years? A video there from 2015. I've been preaching this for years. Everything's severely overvalued. Okay. Foreign investing comes in drives up the asset prices everybody wants to compete with it everybody's rich on paper but now there's holes in the bubble and it's coming down it's coming down i hope kevin thompson i hope kevin thompson's ready for this i really hope kevin thompson is prepared um for this i know he has a condo and um It's 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 not looking good, guys. I want to get Baker here. I'm trying to try to get him to turn on his Skype. I know he's been in the middle of a lot of things, a lot of uh, personal things he's been doing, but I'm trying to have him on the show. It's, he's a good guy to have on the show because this is a big deal. That's according to a poll of more than 1,500 people conducted on behalf of Credit Canada, a nonprofit credit counseling agency. And joining me now is uh, Adriana Molina, Credit Canada spokesperson. So let's talk about how big the debt load of Canadians are uh, this year compared to previous years. So at Credit Canada, at least in terms of our clients, we've seen it steadily increasing. So at, in 2017, it was closer to about 15,000 um, versus now it's creeping up uh, beyond eighteen thousand dollars. 
So it, it sounds like, uh, according to your survey, that 66% of GTA residents uh, who already have debt are, predict are predicting that they're actually going to have to take on more. Is it because the cost of living in a big city like Toronto is just becoming unaffordable? That's Okay, guys. Let's take on more debt, and let me explain to you more debt, okay? This is how I see more debt, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. The reason why we don't build... This is a little bit off topic, but it, it, it has to do with what's happening with housing. The reason why we don't build those big spaceships and go explore space to carry a lot of fuel, it's very simple. It gets to a point where the weight of the fuel makes you carry more fuel just to carry fuel. So it becomes irrelevant. So now with the debt, now with people's debt load, they need to borrow more debt to carry their debt. It's the same thing with the spaceship with its weight and saying, well, we'll build a bigger spaceship to hold more fuel. No, but now you're carrying fuel to carry fuel. It, it doesn't make no sense whatsoever. There's no way. It, this is broken. You can't do that. That's retarded. That's crazy. So now people are borrowing more debt to keep their debt going. And that's what's happening. So this, this uh, Mike in the Night, we're going to do... Um, we're going to do some Mike in the Night this Saturday. We're going to do defaults, and we're going to do uh, uh, Mike in the Nights is going to be moved not this week to Sunday, but next week after the 20th. We're going to go on the main channel, and we're going to launch on the main channel again. I'll be uh, hopefully out of YouTube jail unless they don't like one of my Australian housing videos. So basically it's like this. People, the, the smart guy in the room would say, hey – Let's just build bigger spaceships to hold more fuel. It will be okay. We can go further. No, you're gonna you're carrying fuel to to have fuel. It doesn't make no sense. And when you go back to the housing market here in Toronto, when you go back here, people need to borrow more to carry that debt. So you're just borrowing to to carry it. To, there's no point. You're not going anywhere. And that's what's happening here. Let me see if I can get Steve on the show. I see Steve. Steve, are you on Skype there? Let's see if Steve's in the Skype there. Steve, if you could call me on the Skype, I'd like to know what's happening there in, in the GTA there area. If you want to call in, please call in now. I'll get Andrew later on the show. Uh, he's been following and analyzing the um, Royal Commission. And he's been... Um, analyzing a lot of things so i would like uh, steve to come onto the show if that's okay i'm just trying to get my skype is acting really weird people like everything changed i'm gone for two days and like everything is like just not working right i don't know why i'm gone for three days everything's like upside down okay stp let's see if he picks up his skype here See if we can get him to turn on his Skype. Well, it's working. You're on the mic with the beep. Steve, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Who the hell is this? It's me. You know who it is. Okay, uh, I saw the video that you urged me to play, Sitting News. Um, what did you think of my, my methodology or my, my, my comparison to a spaceship? Let's build a bigger spaceship so we could carry more fuel. But no, the problem is you're carrying fuel to have more fuel. There's no point anymore. Yeah, it's the blind leading the blind. Right, and that's what's happening right now with people having to borrow to fuel their expenses and people having to sell off assets to fuel their expenses. And there's no, there's no end to it, Steve. Regrettably, you're right. You're absolutely right. So where do we go from here? What's going on on the ground there? What can you tell us? Can you give us some insight on what's going on? Uh, yeah, we've uh, we've had a, a, an astronomical increase in uh, in repossessions this week. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just a bad week. Who knows? Um, but everything's uh, 
really starting to increase here. I've spoken to uh, friends of mine that work uh, at the banks, including my buddy at the IBC. And um, in addition to his comments last week, um, he's also basically reiterated what he said last week. And furthermore, um, they, uh, they're they going to probably make an announcement uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, I would say by the first week of, uh, of April, uh, just how bad uh, the defaults are getting because at the end of the day, their uh, they're actual shareholders uh, are going to find out about this um, very, very, very quickly. And I think there's going to be a press release put out to them because uh, the stock's going to get hit hard. Oh. So let's continue watching this together, Steve. It's a big sure, part of it, it. Um, especially when you consider housing. It's becoming less affordable for more people. Um, but it also has to do with the rise of unpredictable um, employment across Canada and mm -hmm. also in a big metropolis city like Toronto. So when you have unpredictable employment, you have unpredictable income. Mm -hmm. so okay, let's pause it right there, Steve. What are they talking about unpredictable? What happened to the 90 million jobs we added last week or the last quarter? <laughs> <coughs> Mike, um, those jobs that uh, we actually added last quarter, you have to you have to peel back the layers um, and understand. In addition to you know a decent participation factor, um, you have to look in at those jobs in terms of uh, the quality of the jobs, um, not just you know what they're making, so on and so forth. Um, in actual fact. Um, Oh, who was it? The uh, I'm trying to uh, David Rosenberg um, from Glasgow Chef. He was on BNN and he kind of went over uh, the nitty gritty on on that jobs report and basically de debunked it to say, "Hang on a second. As much as we, you know, we added all these full time jobs, let's pump the brakes here and you know peel back the layers and figure out what what really happened here. Yeah, we've added you know full time jobs." But at the same point in time, those full-time jobs um, aren't really paying a whole heck of a lot. And you also have to look at those full-time jobs. What's it take to be consider a full-time job, Mike? How many hours a week? Forty, buddy. Forty. No, that's that, that that's incorrect. Okay, tell me then. I haven't worked for an employer in like twenty-five years. Yeah, anything anything over twenty-eight hours a week is full-time employment. Okay, I did not I did not know that. Yep, I was surprised when I heard that too. Okay. Yeah, it's actually if you if you look at it in terms of hours worked, um, it, it, it it it's not what you think. So anybody that wants to go around and 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 you know say oh you know we have great jobs, so on and so forth, it's absolutely insane. Okay. And anybody Steve. that's the economy that's doing that's doing absolutely great is uh, you know got to be face down in a gutter with his wanker shoved up his rear. Well, I got this here. Uh, the articles is one of them here. It says, Government of Canada creates more than 70,000 quality jobs for young Canadians through Canada summer jobs through 2018. So what they went around is they went to different colleges and high schools and posting job fairs and stuff. But the problem is apparently uh, a lot of um, the jobs went to migrant workers that came to Canada from one of the articles I read that a good percentage of them went to migrant workers. Yeah. So yep, absolutely, I, and you're, you're going to see a lot of a lot of low-paying jobs within you know the the service sector like restaurants, bars, so on and so forth. Okay, because our GDP growth was like what zero point two zero point one percent stagnant. You just say negative, Mike. Yeah, negative. Yeah. If you want to get if you really want to get technical and be like a real if we want to be real analysts on this show, it's a negative position right now, but. But uh, let's go according to what the, the damn articles are trying to shove down our throats. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the hours worked is, is what really was what really matters. And it just wasn't there. Um, it, it, it just really wasn't. And a lot of those jobs, just like you said, Mike, unless they are, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 jobs, they're not buying houses in the GTA. They're not buying houses even outside of the GTA. I'm sorry, it's just not happening. Oh no, they're gonna they're not buying nothing. Uh okay, right here, 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 here. This is the one I think you sent me, Steve. Hmm. Let me open it. Let me open it up here. 
Come on, baby. I don't know, it's taking half an hour. Financial polls. What gives? Canada's job market off to its best start in almost 40 years. Remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> Since 1981. Yep. Employment increased by 55,000 in February. That's a lot of jobs. And Canada's economy has added 290,000 jobs since August. Wow, that's more than what the U.S. created with uh, 30, uh, three, 350 million people. That's really good for Canada. I mean, the government should pat itself on the back. Yeah. Okay, okay let me see if I could find that part where it says here where it's going to migrant workers. Let me see. Jobs increasing largely reflects high labor force numbers rather than falling unemployment. Let me just see here. Fading out work, labor force, uh, breakdown of those numbers. I'm just trying to see where it says there where it's going to my majority of uh, jobs went to migrant workers because I remember reading that article like plain as day. I'm like, so they created jobs for the people that they brought in. But what about the people? You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're bringing in more people than I think that were jobs were creating. What do you think, Steve? Oh, I, I, I think a lot of these new Canadians, if you will, um, are saturating the market um, and, and just basically consuming all the jobs that they possibly can. Um, because if they go on the system, um, they're scared of, you know, getting, uh, getting deported. Um, the only, you know, it, if you come here legally, um, you know, and you, you, you pass A, B, and C, uh, including the sniff test and the background test, and you can't make a go of it and you, you, you go on welfare, you got a good chance of being deported. Now you come here illegally, you're never getting deported. Let's put it that way. I mean, that's, that's the way to get to Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you just, you know, cross that line and boom, you're come here. And that, uh, that lucky sperm part-time drama teacher just says, here you go. Yeah. Okay. Steve, I need you to comment on this article here. Uh, I saw you commenting in the comment section and I, I made a video for it at the hospital there. Average cost of a detached Toronto house will be likely 3.5 million by 2026. Can you comment on that, please? Absolutely ridiculous. Insane. Mike, 3.6. So, let's just look at this way okay what's the average house price in toronto right now after the after the correction that we've we've we're currently experiencing 790. Um, and we'll, 790 okay so let, let's just chalk that up for simple math eight hundred thousand dollars right okay so in order to get to 3.6 that's going to be the average that's going to be the average house yeah is that what it's saying yes yeah, average home average home okay so how many times is the market like? W w what are we looking at? They're looking at a, the at a, a, a massive increase here. What they're looking at a two million, almost one point seven million dollar increase in the next seven years. One point seven million dollars. Okay, great. So now I'd like to know what would the combined household income have to be if they put twenty percent down on three point six million dollars? Tell Four, me this. Four hundred and thirty three thousand a year. Four hundred and thirty-three thousand a year. Yeah, with with twenty percent down. Yes. Okay. So. Because right now it's two ten. With the stress test, remember? I read it in this article right here. It's at two ten. Two ten. Sorry. Right now it's two ten. Right now it says it's right here. Two hundred and ten. Two hundred eleven thousand, and in Toronto it's one eighty-seven thousand annual income to buy an average home. Just an average seven hundred thousand dollar home. Eight hundred thousand okay. dollars. Now, now we're going to look at that. Okay, so basically, they're they're going off of five and six times earnings. Right. You realize that, right? Well, it's a bunch of crap, is what it is. It's, it's impossible. Okay, so at the end of the day, three point six million dollars. What? If if you did five times, if you if you if you divided that by five times, what do you get, Mike? Oh, I don't know, man. Uh, zero point three point five divided into five, uh, zero point seven something. Yeah, it's uh, it, let's put it this way, Mike. It doesn't fit. Well, you need to make about four hundred thirty-three thousand a year to to actually just. That's with 20% down. 20% down. 
So you so have to make four thirty three with this stress test that we have now. You have to make four hundred thirty three thousand dollars to buy a three point five million dollar house in twenty twenty six. If you did five times earning of four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars, the maximum mortgage that you'd be able to qualify is for two point one six five. Yeah. So that's not even close. So my number's not even off. So three point five million dollars for a detached bungalow. You know, but but I already debunked I debunked this because property taxes would be like fifty, sixty grand a year. So I, I don't know. Unless the person is like like teleporting himself to another planet to work and then re teleporting back to Earth and making these killer wages working on a different planet, that's the only way I could see it happening. Right. So I mean at, at this point, Mike. Uh, to answer your question, you'd probably need about a combined household income of about six hundred and fifty, seven hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Okay, and so if you factor that in, <laughs> I mean, Mike, um, if if you did six hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, okay, and you divided that, and you divided that by twelve, okay, that's fifty four thousand. 166 167 okay a month yeah yeah okay. now you're going to divide that by 20 working days yeah so you so basically what you'd need is that household would have to make two thousand seven hundred and eight dollars a day yeah so this day yeah this these guys are on a uh, 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 drunk punch kool-aid there's no way the houses will be 3.5 million by 2026 the average cost of a detached average home in Toronto. So we debunked that. That's gone. We already know that. Property tax alone will just kill the person. The brick house just says a loaf of bread, 350 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless they start paying us, like, if they add a zero to our currency for the inflation. So if they add a zero. So, like, our dollar bill, our loony, we were 10. Our, our $5 bill, we were 50. Our $10 bill, we were 100. They put this in these requirements in the beginning. A lot of people would not have never bought. And prices would have never rised. <laughs> oh, I guess organized real estate had uh, had their hand on this one, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So now it's it is going to be tough to buy right now, Steve, with all the stress testing and how much you need to put down, and how much your annual income needs to be, dude. I try. I tried getting. I tried getting a. Um, uh, 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 a line of credit on my house for 30 grand and they declined me so I could buy my building I want to buy and they declined me they said no you we know you own your house free and clear but it's still not good enough for us so we're gonna have to decline you even though we could take your house and your business and everything you have because I would have put down 80 percent right Steve yeah 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 absolutely um you you from a lending standpoint, you got to be a fool not to do that deal. But they didn't want to do it. They said, "Nope, you don't qualify." So, Mike, tell me this much: I got I, I got a letter yesterday, mm -hmm. and you know what that letter was from the bank? What? Um, I got the letter saying that uh, my mortgage pre-approval um, is expiring okay. prematurely. They're no longer holding the rate for 120 days. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. And, and it wasn't signed by anybody. It was it was just a computer generated, and it basically was sent out. It was a mass mailer. Mass mailer. So I'm not the only one. Okay. Okay. So, okay, we covered that because there's, so affordability is going to get tougher. We know that. And consumer confidence right now, it, they're starting to kind of trickle it out in Australia. They've been hinting at it for a little while. But Australia's slowdown housing crash hit consumer confidence in March, says survey. Steve, I think consumer confidence has been down for the last year. I think it's the lowest it's been since 1975. Now, people not buying cars, and there's there's these massive cemeteries. I have somebody on my channel that that's an insider. Uh, that's that's an insider in the channel. Uh, um, the insider, he's in our channel, but he's an insider when it comes to um, managing inventory for new cars. Okay, and guess what he told me? They Tell have me. graveyards and graveyards of brand new cars, and they don't want to lay people off so they could start 
damaging um damaging the um uh the auto sector and doing layoffs he says he what he does is he manages manages fleets of car parks across canada and parts of the u.s and they move cars around that's all they do steve that's all that's his job is moving inventory that doesn't sell he's saying 20, 2016 vehicles are still sitting in a lot unsold he says they're in the tens of thousands he says right now the 20, 2018 vehicles that were sold from 2017 to 2018 there's tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of them all over lots across the U.S. and Canada, and they're scared to lay off workers because it's going to make things worse. What do you think of that, Steve? I absolutely agree. I actually added six new vehicles to my fleet, and they are all 2017 brand new uh, pickup trucks uh, or cargo vans, and I got them for a song. No freight, no PDI, no gas tax, no air tax, no nothing. Hey, we got uh, Forma Fist in the comments there. What's up, buddy? Um, yeah, guys, we're going to have open lines, so if anybody else wants to call, we're just going to wrap up with Steve here real quick here. Any else, anything else, yeah. Steve, you want to add to it? No, to be honest with you, uh, Forma Fist is a wealth of information. Of and course. A wealth of I always Love promote it. his channel. Uh, see, for many people watching on my backup channel, and it just shut off, and I had to restart, and I lost all my views, and it went down to 15 views the whole rest of the show. I'm really, really, really disappointed with this internet. We're supposed to be getting better as we go. It's the biggest joke in the world. Yeah. Anyways, all right, Steve, thanks for filling our uh, filling the void here for Toronto and letting us know what's happening in the GTA and repossessions. I really appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, stay on the pulse with me. Uh, call me through the week like you usually do. And uh, anything breaking, let me know. I'm free. I'm free and clear again. Baby's born. Everything's good. Yeah, congratulations, Mike. Um, I'm, uh, I wish you nothing but the best. I'm glad that uh, the baby and uh, mom are doing very well. Yes. So good to be with you. I will get off uh, the line here so uh, Mr. Uh, Formifist can call on in. You be well. Take care, Mike. God bless you. Cheers. Okay, that was Steve the Plumber in the show. Been a longtime guest on the show. I don't know how many years now he's been calling in for. Uh, like I said, he's been calling in since I was doing the Skype when I used to do Skyping. And, uh, yeah, who do we got here in the comments here? Formifist was asking um, if what, what time I'm going to be off, uh, what time I'm streaming. Till. I kind of stream until, like, I run out of material or run out of what's going on in the market. Uh, Formifist should call in. Anybody should call in right now. I don't care. Anybody that's on the ground there that's watching this housing market closely, we got... Um, Okay. Oh, yeah, we got Brianna there. Um, uh, let's get her on the show because she, she's been on count commenting for ages. Uh, let's call her right now. I'm calling her right now. Let's see if she picks up her phone. She's been in the comments like every single show. And see if she picks up. And she's been messaging me saying, I never needed random calls. Like this. Oh, I do random calls all the time. See if she picks up. Hey, B, B what's up, man? Not much. What's up? Nada. Thanks for thanks for picking up the phone. Yeah, I do random calls. I call people. If you have me on Skype, I might randomly call you and see if you're available. Yeah. Cool. How, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. So, what's going on? Tell us what the scene is in your area. Uh, I I I don't. I... I don't really know. I mean, everything seems pretty normal around here on, on the surface. I mean, although I live on Highway 7 in Richmond Hill, so, like, there's a lot of stuff being built around me, like a lot of condo buildings, a lot of townhouses, and so I, I see a lot of that, and, like, I'm, I'm kind of concerned um, considering what's Kind of happening right now so i don't i don't know i don't know what else to tell you i mean like i'm i'm not i'm not an expert here i come yep. on the show because i yeah i, I want to learn from 
no, 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 no. You know I mean? You're not going to learn much from me. What you're going to learn from me is to basically okay. just make sure you read the fine print when you're signing documents and do your own research when you're going to be doing things like that. We just I want uh, intel from people on the ground that could tell me, you know, you know, you know, you just told me, you just told me they're building around in your area. And that's that's what we want to hear here. We want to hear people with real stories, right? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. You so know? it's it's changed. No, because when I was, I'm talking about when I was in my early, like very early twenties, it was everybody was Italian in Richmond Hill. Uh, okay. Growing up. Really? Like, okay. Yeah, it was all Italian. It was um, uh, very highly predominant Italian communities there. So it's completely changed, eh? Well, you don't. How well, long yeah, have you been living I, up I in mean, that area? I mean, I live right on the. Uh, only like. Three and a half years. Oh, okay. So you don't know. Yeah, okay. So I'm telling you from my experience, that area was very predominantly Italian in the Richmond Hill area. And you're saying now it's it's uh, it's it's changed a lot, eh? So you're saying they moved to Woodbridge and other cities um, and Thornhill, I guess, I'm guessing? Yeah, I mean, Thornhill is kind of, um, like, technically... It's weird. I, I technically I live in Thornhill, but like I I live right on the border of like Richmond Hill and Markham, but I'm technically Thornhill. It's it's kind of confusing. But okay. um Thornhill is is kind of interesting. I mean, you have the um, you have some Persians and you have some Jewish people and you have some Asian people. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean very, you got to mix that. Very, yeah. very, very interesting uh, changes happening in the province of Ontario. Wow. Uh, anything? Do you? Yeah. Own a well, rent? in my building, a rent. Okay. Are you in looking into buying into the market one day, or? Um. <laughs> hopefully, in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day it would be nice. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's been not easy. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I hear One you. Day. I, no, I I hear you. I hear you. It's been it's been tough. It's been a tough go for a lot of younger people. They've been having a really tough time. Um, really, 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 really tough time getting um, getting their foot in the door. And you know, usually people could could get a little starter home or a little starter condo if they're single, work their way up a bit, and then sell and then upgrade and then that's how it usually works that's how it worked for many years right so yeah, i'm not too it, sure what is the i mean honestly yeah like i mean okay for me and my my peer group you know um for example i didn't have i didn't know anyone that was totally independent living in Toronto, like growing up, like all of my friends either lived with their families or, you know, or, or like you see couples that can buy things, but like, I don't know, in my, with my circle of friends and like my peers, you never really saw a single person. 20 and you're like, what? You live with your parents still? How old are you? I'm 20. You what? You live with your parents at 20? Are you crazy? You should have moved out when you're 18. That's that's the pep talk you get from your friends. Like, ah, oh, he still lives with his parents. He's he's 22. How embarrassing. Now you gotta live with your parents if you want to eat craft cheese and macaroni for dinner. Yeah, no kidding. You know, it's getting really tough, and it's not your fault, and it's not the millennials' fault. It's these, this. Um, I guess the movement of, of wealth coming into Canada and the movement of wealth is bringing in a lot of money. Do you remember the article I read to you guys? Canada wants more Chinese. <laughs> 500,000 a year. Well, Canada's competing right now for wealthy uh, Chinese Im immigrants because that's what's going to... So is Australia, so is New Zealand. Every English-speaking country is competing for wealthy immigrants and that's what's holding Canada down is the Canadian proper can't catch up with that, can't catch up with the wealth. I know. I know. You know? Yeah. So that's where we're at right now, you know? Anyways, yeah. well, anything else you want to add to the show? Anything you want to tell us that we should know? No, I, I just, uh, well, yeah, I just want to let you know I, I, I really like your show. Uh, I appreciate 
what you do. And I mean, I feel like when I tune into a lot of news sources, it's, it's a lot of drama and stuff. Mm. But when I tune into you, it's just like an honest layman, you know, giving like <laughs> telling me like the truth. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, thank you for tuning in and supporting us in the comments section. I really appreciate that. All right, yeah. B, thanks thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate your time. Have a good one. Thanks, Mike. Talk good, to you soon. Good night. So that's Brianne there, and she's on the show. So everybody that's in the comments needs to call in. you got to add me on Skype. I don't mind if you call me or I call you. I don't really care. We got Formifist in the in the thing, uh, and, and he's on Skype right now. I'm not sure is um i'm not sure if i could get i don't know if he's streaming right now i don't know what's happening uh, everyone's saying their internet's bad everywhere it's not just me so a lot of people are having internet issues across the country apparently i got a message from somebody here okay guys i got an instant message here hey mike watching you from brooklyn new york been watching your channel for many many years now i like the hat good job uh our internet's been up and down and all around wow it sounds like a rap song here in Brooklyn, and it's been happening right now in the other cities, in the other boroughs. So that's another person watching there from the Bronx that's having problems in their vicinity. And then we got Manuela from Florida. Hola, Mike. Uh, love, love the hat. Great show. Yes, we are having the same problem here in the state of Florida. They're doing some internet backup test switch, blah, blah, blah. And it is affecting a lot of Floridians here, uh, west of 95. Keep up the hard, keep up the good work, good hard work. We love you here. Gracias, adios. So people are getting insta chats here on Skype from people from all over the place. Oh, better dwelling. Oh, better dwelling. I just got. I just actually got an uh, 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 article. We're going to do that in a second. Just breaking right now. So Australian slowdown, housing crash hit consumer confidence in March. No, I got a buddy that moves inventory around. The amount of cars that are not selling from 2017 and 2018 and 2016. Sitting in lots, in these huge cemetery lots of cars. It's phenomenal. Instead of lowering the prices 50% and slashing them and getting them out the door, they'd rather hold on to these cars and let them rot in parking lots all over North America. We got here, Toronto's housing market is tanking. We know this. Home sales in Toronto fell 35% year over year in February. Average prices down 12.4%. Uh, the city's housing bubble looks like it's deflating. Um, you don't say? It's happening right now all over the place. What is this crap here? Vancouver is awesome. Non-residents own 4.9% of Metro Vancouver homes. So 4.9% of Vancouver homes, guys, is owned by non-residents. Just so... You guys know this is according to these guys. I think it's more than that. I think it's more than 4.9% for non residents. I think it's about anywhere from 18 to 25% for non residents. Because you go to Vancouver now, no one's speaking English, right? There's nobody speaking the colonial English that, that was brought here by the British. So no one speaks that anymore there. So good luck with that. Uh, we got here from News Talk. This was sent to me from. Uh, uh, from Cameron Fitzpatrick down in Dublin. Major housing and homeless demonstration um, get underway in Dublin. He was actually promoting my channel here uh, in this protest in Dublin. He was promoting uh, me as a housing advocate for all English-speaking countries. Uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Fitzpatrick, for doing this for me. I really appreciate it. He was here, and he was giving out business cards to my channel. That's probably why I've been going up in subscription for some bizarre reason, like like 800 subs a month because I think people are getting my channel out there. And uh, this gentleman was there at this rally. Uh, he sent me photos on, uh, not on Skype, but he sent it to me on Instagram. I rarely go on Instagram, but when I went to see that, I'm like, wow. He's like, he showed me a photo of the business card he was giving out telling people to follow me because I stand up for all English-speaking countries and making – housing affordability we know that people don't want free housing people want to you know you work 50 hours a week 60 hours a week or whatever the new full time is 28 hours a week you want to be able to have a place to call your own i mean what are you working for then you know what i'm saying and 
people in the comment section. Guys, go ahead and call me in on Skype if you have first-time callers. I want some fresh blood on the show. Come on, guys. Where's the fresh blood out there? Somebody called me earlier. I accidentally hang up on them. It wasn't my fault. I'm sorry. Um, oh, here we go. Gary Medeiros. Let's, let's bother him. Let's see what he's doing. Gary. Yeah, it's me. Epa, tá bom. I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's my my fellow Portuguese man, uh, countryman here. So, Gary, man, you got a lot to tell us. Go ahead. What's on your mind, buddy? You're always in the comment section. What's going on, buddy? Tell us. I don't know, man. The same thing always with this housing market. It's just nuts. I, I've never seen anything like this, basically. I've been trying to buy a house now for like three years and nothing's happening. It's did unbelievable. You see, did you see the article I just read right now about how prices go down, buying will be even more complicated with uh, stress testing and all this crap? Oh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm first-hand involved. I know exactly what the stress is about because it affected me too. So so what 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 are you doing now? Are you, are you going to wait on the sidelines? Well, I don't know. I'm kind of up and down about it. I mean, I'm trying to – I would actually think it's better to wait on the sidelines right now because the market just seems to be on a slippery slope. So I'm kind of just uh, kind of watching from the sidelines the best way to say it. So remember this article I read here? Basically, in the last eight months, the whole change of the housing pricing in Toronto in the last eight months alone – you would have saved seventy thousand dollars if it right like if you bought eight months ago, you'd be down seventy thousand right now. Yeah, I just read that article. So basically, if you were in a coma for eight months, you saved yourself seventy grand. So right now, jumping into a falling market is going to be really tough to gauge. Do you remember that video I made about how to gauge when to buy back into the market? Yeah, yeah. It, you do that. Go to MLS, print off the house you want, five comparables in the area, and if three of those sell in one quarter, then it's time to buy. And if none of those sell, then you just keep watching. Yeah, pretty much, which is what I'm doing. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's just it's been so crazy. You know, a lot of people are telling me, go, you better jump in and this and that. But uh, I don't know. I just the market seems to be too uh, messed up to even get involved right now. Well, how do you feel about the manipulation of the market, the government adding all this crap on to make it uh, easy for people to buy with first-time home buyer loans and all this crap and lowering interest rates and all this ballooning crap, and then all of a sudden they turn 180 and then make it impossible to buy? How does that make you feel? That's a bunch of BS, to be honest. It's just I think they're trying to prop up something that isn't there. I mean, they're trying their best to save this market when I think they don't know themselves what's coming, so... I think that's all they're pretty much trying to do. So now it's the Canadian. The Canadian proper is in a lot of trouble. And a lot of uh, now, uh, apparently, from the GTA, I got word from somebody on Skype right now um, telling me right now, saying that they're in Oakville, Ontario. Hey, Mike, I'm in Oakville, Ontario. I just want to let you know people are fleeing. Uh, sorry, offshore buyers are fleeing back to their countries. Apparently, they're trying to get their money out of Canada again or get it, trying to get their money out of Canada and move it back to Asia. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I think they. I think every. I think everyone outside the country and everyone trying to get in or trying to get out. I guess should, I should say, is starting to see what the housing market is. What the housing market is really all about. And uh, I think a lot of people regret that. A lot of them regret the decision of getting in in the first place from outside the country. So, and I think they're gonna. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are gonna learn the hard way that, uh, you know, things here right now aren't uh, aren't uh, aren't very good. Yeah. No, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you loud and clear. Um, I got Formifist in the comments. Yeah, uh, Formifist, call me after Gary Medeiros. We're going to pick his brain and find out what's going on on, on his end there. So, Gary, I mean, I, I, I'm seeing your picture here. It looks like you're newly married, young family, I guess. Yeah, I've been married now for uh, – it's going to be four years in October. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, – you know, I live with my in-laws right now, so just saving up, trying to buy a house and uh, – Still looking. But, it's gotta uh, suck, dude. It's gotta suck big time. How do you feel when I bring up those articles down in like Nashville or or Florida? Oh, look at this four bedroom house for one hundred and fifty grand. I just uh, when I hear that, I just said, you know, it just it's a joke. That's basically what I say every time. You know, yeah. Just the difference is unbelievable. It's phenomenally unbelievable. Well, because remember, Trump closed the wall, closed the closed all the borders. There's no more immigrant, not big immigration coming in anymore, right? 
That's true. So yeah. When you don't have people flooding the market, it it it's it's kind of easier for the locals to to buy a house or to move up in life, right? That's right. And here we have the doors wide open. So uh, you know, the way I see it right now is that uh, I don't know how else to say this, but uh, basically we're we're becoming to a point where the, the people who come into this country who are not Canadians are basically treated better than we are. And we're the we're the actual Canadians in the country, right? So it just it's a whole uh, interesting situation. It's very heartbreaking because we, our parents, I know your parents and my parents, they worked very hard to build the infrastructure in this country. That's right. And coming from a Portuguese background, Gary knows what I'm talking about. A lot of my family worked in the con- construction industry in Toronto and laid roots in Toronto, in Oakville and Mississauga and worked very hard as a Portuguese, you know, Portuguese community worked very hard. All communities work hard, but the Portuguese really slaved to pay off their houses, right? Right, Gary? And that's a, absolutely. And that's the thing. They, and like our parents worked hard to get to where they were. And they, you know, they came here with basically came here with nothing. And they had to work their way, you know, in the country, like to get to where they are today. So it's that's that's the whole thing I'm saying. And then a lot of people that come in today basically get handed everything, right? And that's the difference. So, Gary, what do you say for the average uh, immigrant that comes here with a, with a sack over his shoulders that did, you know, like our grandparents came back in the day when they came with a burlap sack? Or, or, or a knapsack on their, back, on their back with 10 cents or two nickels to rub together, and that's all they had. Do they have a chance to make it today if they arrive today in Canada? You know what? I don't know because being the way things are right now, you know what? I don't even know if they'd even let them in because it seems like all the, you know, you know, all the government's laying in is people who have money, in my opinion. So Yeah, yeah it's yeah. been really tough because uh, what do, you, do, you, do you remember the massive uh, Portuguese deportation from Ontario? Yeah, vaguely, yes, but a little bit, yeah. Yeah, they were deporting a lot of Portuguese from Ontario. That was pretty bad. And the reason why I'm on this immigration thing um, full stop is because of what happened to us and how they were – the president of Portugal would message the president of uh, – the prime minister of Canada asking him, could, they, could these people that you're deporting go home and get their luggage at least because they arrived to Portugal with no clothes to change? Mm-hmm. That's how bad it was, and that's how that's how bad they hated us back in the day. How old are you, Gary? If you don't mind me asking, I'm 35. Okay, so I, I got I got six years on you, so I know I kind of remember that a little bit more than you do because I was in the front line of that when that happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. And then now they're letting everybody in that they can, and but they disallow certain. You know what I'm saying? Certain countries or some, certain people to come in. You know. So that's causing a huge problem in the housing market right now. And uh, Canada, okay, Gary, I know you know I, I read this one. Canada bringing in 500,000 Chinese and Canada competing for wealthy investors. What does this show for Canada in the next couple of years? If we're getting 500 to 600,000 a year and we need a minimum $3 million to get in, what does that leave us, Gary? You know what? I don't know. It just it doesn't sound uh... – and it just sounds to me like, like I said, they're just letting anybody in, or at least Chinese people wise, or whatever the situation is. Basically, people have money. That's the way I see it right now. Because Canada say they're compete, they're competing. It's a lucrative business to bring in wealthy investors. But, 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 what about us to build the infrastructure? And what about us that made Canada what it was? And then now we're losing that. I don't know. Like I said, it's uh, it's an interesting situation. Yeah, I'm really sorry. What time is it there? It's late, isn't it? It's late, yeah. Yeah, it's 11.30, yeah. All right, Gary. So you know what, buddy? Hold in the sidelines. Just be patient, buddy. The, the longer you wait, the more you save, buddy. You know that, right? Yeah, it's, it's basically what I'm doing, right? It's like I said, it's a, it's a tough situation, right? I mean, not just for me, but for everybody, really. It's the first time home by right now. It's the people that you really feel sorry for because it's just not feel sorry for, but I mean – we're the ones uh, with facing the biggest challenge right now. You know, I, I've been looking for a house now for three years, and I've lost about 12 bid wars. So it's it's not a fun experience, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. You lost 12 what? Say it again. Bid wars. Oh, bid you know, wars. Oh, yeah. don't, don't get into that, Gary. Don't get into the bidding wars. I know. I tried, right, because I tried to get in the market originally, and uh, 12 bid wars, that's uh, – yeah, it's a hell of a lot of bid wars to lose, right? And it just, you know, it's a very frustrating thing. And I kind of stayed on the sidelines after all that. And now I'm kind of looking again, but still kind of on the sidelines, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. No, no, you stay on the sidelines, buddy. You just keep keep on the MLS. Print off the, the, the listings that you want to buy. Put them up on yeah. your wall. Watch the comparables. Watch to see what sells. 
watch what drops and then when you see three of those of the five homes sell it's a it's a buyer it's time that you should buy but if nothing sells and they get removed off the market and they don't sell then you got to find another comparable to compare it with as prices keep declining yeah well like i've been like i said i've been watching them where everything well i'm looking i'm not looking in toronto i'm looking in bolton ontario and uh so far, what I'm seeing is everything that uh, it's selling is selling for under asking, which is a good thing in my books. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, it seems things seem to be dropping slowly or uh, over there, and it's kind of where I want to be. It's kind of just above Woodbridge. So, yeah, a lot of Europeans. Is that where all the Europeans move to? Because when I go to Toronto, I don't see any more Europeans. Well, a lot of well, European wise, I guess there are a lot here in Woodbridge and. Uh, Bolton too is becoming very Italian Portuguese. Um, you know, Alliston too further out. I mean, it's becoming Italian Portuguese. Like everyone or Tottenham, like uh, you know, everyone's moving further, further away because you can only touch so much, right? I mean, you can only afford so much now. And you know, it's it's funny because on TV now they're saying stuff about like how you gotta drive until you qualify, if that makes any sense. And that sounds so ridiculous. Dude, Gary, do you want to spend eight percent of your life on the road? No, absolutely not. Yeah, eight percent of your life is huge. You, you know how many so people are actually. Doing it. It's unbelievable. Like people are actually driving far and wide until they qualify, which doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So, it's disgusting. And 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 then the the infrastructure, Gary. When I went back to Toronto last year, I it was phenomenal. How much traffic were on every major street because everyone left the GTA to everyone left to move into outer cities. And then now, if you want to jump on the four hundred one on a Tuesday afternoon, it's all traffic. You can't go anywhere. No, you can't. It's 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 like gridlock. It's unbelievable. All the major streets, Mississauga Road, uh, 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 all up to, all the way up to Brampton, all those major streets. You know what I'm saying? Like seven, uh, 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 Highway Seven is packed. Everything is just jam packed everywhere you go because everyone left those cities. Well, didn't leave. Commute, commute to Toronto, but now take take all the expressways, and now you can't even get anywhere anymore. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, the, the traffic here, or even anywhere really, for that matter, it's unbelievable. And like I said, people who drive so far to come down to Toronto to work every day is just—it's unbelievable. I don't know how they do it. They spend like four or five hours on the road, like two hours there, two hours back. I mean, to spend four hours on the road every day is nuts. I mean, I get—I guess in a way, I get people want to buy a house. And thing is, I don't think you—you know—you buy a house so far and wide. But even if you save a little bit, you're spending it on everything else, like car, car maintenance, and a new car, even, or you know what I mean, like it or gas. You know, it's nuts. Yeah, and the gas too. People aren't looking at the gas and miles per uh, what, what you're getting out out of it, and then at the. I could understand if you take. See, one thing I, I don't mind is if you take a train, okay, Gary. If you take a train, you sit there, you get off, and you commute for five minutes after is fine. Because if you're sitting on the train, you could be. I was. I made a video on how people could spend their time wisely on trains. You could open a, a eBay account and just start selling crap on eBay while you're on the train, you know, and listing your stuff on the train. And before you know right. it, you're making sales and you're making money while you're on the train. But that's not the case. A lot of people are driving, so they're they're in their you know in their zone, right? Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, I don't know how people do it. I mean, yeah, you you get a house, you may get the house of your dreams outside of Toronto or whatever the situation, GTA or further out or whatever. But to drive to Toronto, it's like, is it really worth it? I mean, half the time you won't even get a, ta- a chance to enjoy the house because you're busy driving all the time, and by the time you get home, you're freaking tired, right? So it's it's crazy. So what do you think of right now that article we put up that people have to borrow now, borrow more, or uh, sell stuff just to keep their debts paid off? That's just a ticking time bomb. That's something that's going to blow up, if not already. And that, uh, that That's the way I feel about it. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's you know, to borrow, to, to, to borrow. I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all, in my opinion. But I mean, but people are doing it. That's the messed up part. Yeah, it's like I said, build a bigger spaceship to hold more fuel, but you're holding fuel to carry fuel. What's the point? Yeah, exactly. What There's is no the point? point? It's just, it's just, it's just uh, you know, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, the way I see it in talking about the housing market in general, I do see something coming, whether it's going to be a full-on crash or a correction or a major correction. Something's bound to happen. So yeah. it's just a question now of when. But it's happening in Ireland, Scotland, Australia. Uh, New Zealand. Well, it's happening I mean, in every English-speaking affected, country, right? I mean, the first time around, like you know, when the U.S. had their correction. I mean, a lot of other places did, except these places that are having it now. Like Australia is even worse than we are right now, and oh. they don't look very good at all. So, uh, Steve, I mean, um, uh, Gary, if they move the uh, interest rates to zero percent in Australia, they're still hooped. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that goes without saying. 
Yeah. And even if they lower interest rates here, it's not going to make much of a difference because people owe too much money. Yeah. No, no, I hear yeah, you. I, hear it's you. A, I, I think it's it's you, it's a doomed if you do. It's like you're doomed either way, the way I see it. Okay. We haven't had debt this high before, and it's uh, people think it's a joke, and it's not. This should be taken very seriously, and people don't. And there's so much people in this in this city right now who are so in denial of what's going on with the economy and with the housing market. It's unbelievable. I don't know why these people are in denial. These people must be smoking something. I go back to these videos here, these videos that I made years ago. Look at this. This video I made here years ago. A lot of my videos were taken down. Sydney, Vancouver, housing crash of 47% by 2016. Man, was I ever wrong with that, buddy. But it was coming because you know why? Something was not normal in that market, and I knew something was going to happen in that market. You know, I knew these markets are not normal. You know what I'm saying? And no, they're not. And they and they and they they haven't been normal for a few years now. Not just now, but a few years. I mean, these prices, Mike. At the end of the day, they're not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know what these people think they are, but like as far as like and as far as it goes, these these prices are not sustainable. No. And uh, Steve the plumber is probably bang on. I'm sure there's a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of stuff he sees that. Uh, you know this whole uh, people foreclosing or defaulting and all this stuff. I mean, it's it's happening. They're just not reporting it, but it, I can. I'm pretty sure it is happening. And uh, you know, Steve's on the front end seeing all this. So, yeah, yep. Well, Gary, stay strong. Please stay on the sidelines. Don't you don't want to you don't want to you you know Donald Trump. Gave, I went to a Donald Trump seminar years ago back in Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach area about uh, um, real estate and stuff like that. This is before he did The Apprentice. He was doing speaking seminars, right? Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump said one thing that made so much sense to me, sense to me and I still to this day uh, agree with, and I think it's the greatest thing. And Gary, I'll give you this advice. Some of the best deals you make in your life are the ones you don't do at all. And I agree. Yep. You sitting out at the right time and not winning those bidding wars, that was some of the best deals you've ever made, Gary. Well, hundred percent, hundred percent. I don't regret anything that's happened so far. I mean, you know, it is what it is. But uh, you know, I wouldn't. Of course, I want a house, but I'm not going to pay this kind of money for it. It doesn't make sense. Nope, 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 nope. You're not going to pay a million dollars for a Volkswagen Scirocco when you could buy a beautiful Bentley with all the bells and whistles, right? So, what for? Yeah. And I laughed pretty hard with that article you shared to uh, Toronto by 2026 of being 3.6 million. Like, who the hell is going to qualify for something like that? Yes. It doesn't even make sense. That was the stupidest thing. Okay, I got Foreman Fist calling in. I'm going to let you go, okay? Okay, no problem. We'll talk Have soon. a good one. You too. Yo, what's up, dog? Hey, how's it going? It's going good, buddy. Good to, good to hear from you. What are you up to? i to turn the audio down on your thing. What's the matter? You don't like to hear my voice? No, I don't uh, want to get... Uh, I'm just breaking double, you, dude. Double, t double talk on your uh, your video. Oh, what are you up to, man? It's good to hear from you guys. Uh, Former Fist on the channel. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to his channel. The real deal here, real people. A lot of people are tuning into our material because we are. We're just. We have no agenda, you know. We're just here to, to talk, you know. All right, what's up, Former Fist? Here it is. Fifty-three forty subscribers. Moving up, let's get him to 5,500 by tonight. He does live streams like me. Um, his videos are a lot more better edited than, way better edited than mine. And he gets his message across, which is very important. Okay, buddy, go ahead. You asked me a question. Well, what do you want to know? I'll tell you. I know okay. everything. So uh, Okay. Um, I mean, what is the deal with a lot of the mainstream media throwing out these... Um, organized real estate articles that houses are going to be 3.5 million by 2026. Are they still trying to push that? If you don't buy now, you'll never own narrative. Is that really still going on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's totally, uh, they got to content, baby. They got to fill the pages. They've got to, if they can get, a uh, people on both sides, um, it's like anything. It's like, it's like, um, Bitcoin. If you look at any of those Bitcoin websites, it's oh, it's going up. Oh, it's going down. It's totally. It's so, uh, not something people should pay attention to, in uh, my opinion. The, the, to, there's always going to be people saying uh, prices are going to go up, and there's always going to be people that say prices are going to go down. Um, you have to figure out the reasoning behind what they're saying, 
and uh, their motives. Like uh, a lot of these, um, a lot of these articles are written by uh, people, uh, real estate agents, and and uh, mortgage professionals, and uh, that kind of thing. So you just kind of, you know. And the other the other side of that is sometimes they're spot on. You know, mm-hmm. there's uh, there's people in the uh, real estate industry that are actually um, giving balanced uh, information. So I, it's it's not something to get wrapped up in. You have to look at the actual information and why they're saying it saying it mm-hmm. but this, this one's ridiculous 3.5 million by 2026 it's gonna go now up go down to the bottom does it have a comment section uh, no bullshit i There's, don't look at, i don't like any article that doesn't have a comment section because the comment section is a check and balance to everything so if if the article has a comment section people will uh, call out anything that's wrong with the article or my videos, you know? Mm-hmm. I never delete any comments. If someone wants to call me out and say I'm wrong, do it. And well, I'll leave it there for everybody to see. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've deleted comments on my thing, but not because of what I'm saying in my video. It's people just like trashing me and my, and my family and stuff. No, but, that's, that's silly. Then yeah, you just block them. I get stuff like that, but I delete that kind of crap. Like when people tell me off and mm-hmm. call me fat. It's like, I know I'm fat. What, what are you trying to prove? You know what I'm saying? Okay, next article we got here. Housing affordability is getting worse even even though prices are fall, falling. How is that possible? Well, I think I think all the stress testing and all this B20 crap that's going on, it's making it harder for people to fit in the guidelines. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, people have to be patient, you know. People have to be patient. Um, if you want things like B20 to actually make a difference, like that's the, that's the narrative that's a bit silly. People, people are saying that uh, B20 is bad and it's making housing unaffordable for young people. But you have to remember that, yeah, it does now, but it's going to force prices lower. So you just have to... You just have to wait. Have a have an ounce of patience. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You just have to wait for it to drive prices down. Yeah, that's definitely so, that's definitely for sure. Um, let's go over to here. Toronto's housing market's tanking. We know that, and they're forecasting here. There's their uh, average price is down twelve point four percent, and home sales in Toronto. So these are home sales fell thirty five percent year over year. How much of an oversupply or overglut on the market? Right now, we're seeing a massive oversupply in Sydney, Auckland. We're seeing a massive oversupply in Melbourne, uh, Vancouver, Toronto, uh, San Diego, uh, San Francisco, uh, Seattle, and in Portland, Oregon. We're seeing massive oversupplies on the market. What happened to the supply versus demand? And what do you see happening with this oversupply? Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, it... uh we don't have proper stats on any of that, right? Like, uh, if we knew how many empty homes there was, um, and it was a good stat, you'd kind of know. Because there's this, uh, the people say you want to build and build and build, right? You want to build because there's not enough inventory. But if a bunch of inventory is sitting empty, well, then you do have inventory. It's just being, it's just being sucked up by investors. It's sitting right. empty. And so, I've been pre- we've been, I've been preaching this for you. We've been preaching this for many years now. It's not like a new, it's not a new thing. But, but why, why don't they take into effect the 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 um, hundred and eight thousand empty homes in Toronto, the hundred and eleven thousand in Sydney, this what is it, eighty nine thousand or eighty thousand in Vancouver? Why aren't they taking this account, taking this into account, into their factoring when they're generating these numbers to us? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, I think, uh, what's happening in Vancouver, and you know, the empty home tax is it's 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 making some moves in the in the uh, in the market. Like, I did a video about the. Um, the empty mansions that are getting rented out. So 
I think yeah, it's... Yeah, Steve the Plumber sent me that, but I was in the hospital. Let me see here. Let me see here. Let me go to your video section here for everyone to see. Uh, investing, real estate. I see it here. I see, we hear something. Power's out. Power back on. Uh, the future of Vancouver real estate in Canada. Here we go. Luxury real estate market is toast. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, with the kids screaming. Yeah, I saw part of it. Uh, but I was in the hospital with the wife for uh, pretty much four days. Uh, so Four days? Good God. Yeah, I had a daughter. So uh, so uh, having you member to the family now, to the Martins family. So we're... Uh, we're taking yeah. it with stride, and I love <laughs> Your it. Your wife's okay with you live streaming while she's got a new baby? Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, okay. Yeah, and my mom's in town. My mom, my family, everybody's here, and uh, we were we were stuck in that in that hospital room for like four days straight. I needed to get a little bit of fresh air. You know what I'm saying? Yikes! Four days. Yeah. I can't imagine. That would yeah. suck. Yeah, it it does. But but you know what? It was good. It was really good bonding time with uh, with the new daughter and everything. You know, so that's good. Yeah, we got we got kicked out the next day. Both oh, times. really? No, we had to stay four days because you had to do a C-section, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. My, Hope you uh, don't like sleeping. Well, you already know how it goes. Yeah, I know how it goes. So we got protests happening in Ireland. Um, I've been covering that for a while now. And, and in Edinburgh, too, in Edinburgh, Scotland. Prices have been going off the off the hook with uh, foreign investing, and it's gotten so bad in Ireland that it moved to Northern Ireland now, where foreign investing is hitting Northern Irish shores, and people are kind of like scratching their heads at ah, so they kind of see what happened to the rest of the world, kind of. Well, what happened there? They they ha they had a, a housing bubble. Oh, Edinburgh's being re. It's 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 right now. It's it's cheap right Wait. now. If you buy in 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 uh, Dublin, you're looking at about, oof, like a hundred and seventy thousand, two hundred thousand euros. So it's still affordable. But now a lot of people are buying investment properties and they're leaving a lot of people homeless. And that's why yeah. now in Ireland, there's roughly twelve thousand six hundred people are homeless and three thousand are children. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, the Irish can't get a break, can they? No. No, and it's happening right now in Scotland. Scotland's getting getting a good, a good, a good. Right now, in, in, in Edinburgh, right now is getting a very good, rude awakening of this this housing market. I got people messaging me from there all the time, telling me how yeah. bad things are. Well, yeah. it's a it's a, the money's gonna find. It's like uh, water. It's gonna find the path of least resistance, and by uh, what that means for a housing market is where the where it's cheap. That's why. Uh, Montreal is taking off right now. Like, why is Montreal taking off? Well, there's East. a there's a there's a foreign buyer tax in uh, Vancouver in and Toronto. Then in Toronto, mm -hmm. now they're moving to much. It's it's easy to see. You know, it's just gonna the money's just gonna move where it makes sense. So right now, like you're saying, um, if Ireland's cheap right now and um, the the England is expensive, like London's expensive. Uh, um, it's it's expensive over there. Well, of course, the money's going to go where it's cheap. It's yep. just, it makes sense. So yeah, because a lot of people left London to move to Middle England. So a lot of people have been living in Middle yeah. England and b rebuilding those little towns and cities. Yeah, and it's actually bringing life to those areas, which is really nice to see. That all these abandoned towns that people left to move to the big cities, and the parents and grandparents died off, and the kids still own some of that land up there, and they're moving back, which is really interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it it is interesting. You know what I was gonna ask you about? Mm. I was gonna I was gonna do a video, but I don't know if we'll ever get our schedules together. I'm I'm gonna ask you a question. Would you humor me mm -hmm. for a little bit? All right. You sound super enthused. No, no, I'm listening. I'm I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm just taking you very seriously. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So moving to merit. Mm -hmm. Um, why? What's the difference? Uh, between because you lived in Vancouver, I lived, right? I lived at Stadium, right at Stadium, at um, on Kiefer Street there, right across the street from where the Canucks played for. Right, I right, think, right. Eight, nine. So you you lived in Vancouver. Yeah, right. So at, right, yeah. Um, and you lived in uh, Miami. Yeah. No. Yeah. I lived in I lived in Florida for for like five years, three months. I lived in Mexico for two years. So what's what do you think now you've been through how many winters have you been up there in merit three yeah three yeah 
What do you think about the winters up there? Well, we had a very bizarre winter, um, a, a, a typical usual winter that we usually have. Uh, December was nice. January was nice. And then, boom, February 1st hits. It was cr crippling cold uh, winter. But January, you could still wear like a light sweater and go out. There was no snow. It never snowed. And it was just, boom, February 1st is when, when it just it just hit us. Everyone was expecting spring to come early. And, well, it's spring now. It's like 5, 6 outside right now. So it's not that bad. It, it, we're back to... But we don't have Ontario. We don't have the cold front from the lakes like Ontario does. Where in Toronto, it doesn't get warm until like May 2, 4 weekend. So it's not crazy different from, say, Vancouver. Maybe less precipitation, maybe? Well, you know, well, there never rains here. We get about 360 days of sun. Oh, that's pretty good. That's why I, I love it here. It's like 360 days. It was beautiful sunny day today. Tomorrow, they're forecasting sun all week. Okay, so that's a big difference because yeah. Vancouver is pretty cloudy and gloomy. Oh, for sure. It's it's. A, remember, I don't remember if you remember my old videos. I used to call it Gotham City. It was always dark. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. So the weather, it, but it's colder. And in well, the summer, it's hotter. It's colder. The summer is very hot here because of the dry, uh, the dry. But but here's the thing: we're in this like kind of a caldera, like of an old, uh, I guess, volcano over like the way the town's set up inside of it. We get this beautiful breeze that comes in the summer, and it's so nice and refreshing. Okay. And what about the town of Merritt? Because back a while back, you were having problems with the locals and that yeah. kind of thing, and. Well, what what do you think about the whole uh, the town and the atmosphere? Well, it's a good town. I like it. It's small. It's got everything I need in it. If I need to leave town, it would be like for me to go to Kamloops and I have to go to the hospital for, for a bigger hospital, right? But it has everything you need here. Um, Were you able to have your baby in the Merritt Hospital? No, no, no. They had to send me to Kamloops. So oh, really? For thing, yeah, for things like that, you uh, have to leave the city. Okay. So here's my problem with the with the, the, this town is good. It's great for driving. I saved, you know, my my car insurance went from twelve fifteen hundred a year to seven hundred a year. My car okay, insurance, yeah, that's it's substantial. Dirt yeah. cheap. Um, everything is a stone throw away. I I could go to the big Walmart. I could go to the Canadian Tire. Uh, there's a lot of mom and pop stores in the little downtown area. There's a lot going on. Uh, was I pushed out when I got here? Yes, there was a lot of resistance from the other game store owner in town that basically um, um, owns uh, the same idea of what I'm doing. But I've been doing my business for many years, and I sold my business on the coast, right? So. But what about the people in general? The people are fine. Like, people are fine. A lot of nice people here. I'm noticing a lot of influx of Vancouverites moving here. When I moved mm. in, I was me and another Vancouverite that lived in this cul-de-sac. Right now, of the 11 homes, nine of us are from the coast. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, that's 20, 25% of buyers on Vancouver Island were from the lower mainland. Yeah. From Vancouver. That's not including... The people who moved up from Victoria, lots of people move up here from Victoria mm -hmm. and uh, out east too. So, so, uh, so we got, just so you know, like um, more doctors. We've got an influx of about three, four new doctors in the last year. We got about 11 new nurses that moved in from the coast. We got in um, just a whole bunch of uh, skilled tradesmen that were living in Vancouver, mechanics. Right carpenters lots of carpenters came here and opened shop because everyone's renovating their homes i paid 260 for my house it's got uh it's got you would say it's got 10 bedrooms in it if you were to count uh but it has like three living rooms seven bedrooms and like two dens and like seven bathrooms right so it's a, a walmart sized town it's big enough for a walmart to be here yes and you got a Canadian Tire Superstore? Yes, we do. We have a Canadian Tire Superstore. We have three grocery stores, three big ones to choose yeah. from. And then we have okay. a lot of farmer's markets. So I, I pick up fresh corn, eggs. I don't buy my eggs. I buy it all from people locally that that, that make their own, you know, that harvest their own, that have their own chickens, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. A, a town that size has pretty much everything you need. But the, the hospital thing is a... A big one. Like our hospital, you can do a, a C-section, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. But 
there's certain things that you would have to be shipped down to Victoria. So there's certain medical emergencies that you you this town would actually kill you, right? Yeah. Whereas if you were in Victoria or Vancouver, they'd be able to fix you up. Here, you'd be in a lot of trouble. I'm guessing it would be a, a little bit worse in Merritt than, say, Canberra River. Yeah, but the thing is in Merritt, we built it. We, we have a new hospital. Where they've rebuilt it and extended it a wing, and it's all state-of-the-art. It's good. The doctors, uh, nurses are there and stuff, and and uh, it is a good hospital. Like, when you look at it, the building-wise. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's, I'm not I'm – not, our our, our no, local hospital is no, no. fine, but it 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 uh, the size of the town limits what you can do in that hospital. Right. Right. I, they'll outsource basically different medical procedures, and sometimes if they're important or you know, like uh, I like, broke my I broke my arm when I was a kid, and they had to take me on an ambulance down to Victoria. So whoa. hospitals is a big one for me. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, for me, like, I mean, the hospital, it is it, it, anything you go, they could patch you up and, and ship you out if they have to. That, that Yeah. That's... Yeah. I was talking to somebody. I don't know if it's true, but if you have the wrong kind of jammer here, mm -hmm. you're, you're done. Like if you had been in Victoria, they could have patched you up, but here you're probably done. And it's not something people think about. Well, it's not something like people my age or your age think about, but there's certain things that will just kill you. Like they talk, they talk about uh, life expectancy in the city is actually higher than out in the country. And you think that's counterintuitive. You think out in the country, people are breathing cleaner air. They're eating healthier food. They're more relaxed. But because the city centers have the best medical care and can cover the most amount of medical procedures... You actually live longer, on on average, in the city. Right, right. Yeah, I could see that one million percent. Yeah, of course. But but what if you just don't get hurt? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, eventually something's gonna get you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it gets us all, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of the deal. Well, I got this uh, headline here. Let the bloodbath begin. House prices in Sydney and Melbourne could could have in the worst crash since 1890. Yeah, yeah. That what's happening in Australia is very, very interesting. Uh, it looks like it's definitely worse than Canada, which was surprising to me. When I started to look into it, I thought, wow, this is actually worse than here. Like, I didn't think... Uh, I didn't think anywhere would be as bad as um, Canada, but when I looked into it, it looks like it's it's definitely as bad and possibly a bit worse because some of the things, so like the the um, interest only mortgages. When I heard that, I was kind of like, whoa. Yeah. I was whoa. covering I was covering the interest only mortgages when they were uh, initiated three four years ago, and this is the I got up right on my screen right here, guys. This is a uh, my article. This is my video that was a lot of my videos were taken down. I don't know if you know this, Daniel, but a lot of my stuff, a lot of my content was removed. So I had somebody in the states that actually saved some of my content for some reason. He downloaded some of my videos and he had them nice. on backup. So he I sent hope them they're to doing me. that for other people. Was like, that? Uh, <laughs> I hope they're doing that for Owen Bigland. <laughs> oh yes, that your friend there, your friend in Vancouver. So here it is. Here. Sydney, Vancouver housing to crash 47% by 2016. Here I am talking about it. And he made a compilation because he was talking about, he was going to make a real estate is going to crash seminar. And this is my UK, Australia, New Zealand debt prison. This is from 2015, November 11th. Me talking about that. So I've been covering Australia for a good while. And you know what? Australia is really bad. Like, I mean, I mean... Even if, and I said this the other day, if Australia was to lower rates, they're lowering rates right now because they're in trouble. If they were yeah. to lower rates to zero percent, they still they still won't survive at zero percent at zero percent rates. They're well, just, they're yeah, they're gonna destroy their currency. I've got I know some people that have Australian dollars. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, bank accounts full of Australian money, and they thought it was bad back then, and this was years ago. And they thought, oh, we'll sit, we'll we'll let it sit in the Australian bank account. 
uh, in Australian dollars, and we'll take it out when it gets better. Mm -hmm. But now it's getting way like they're going to they're going to destroy their their dollar. Which I mean, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world for a lot of people unless you want to get out of Australia. Like it uh, it might ding some of those. Uh, foreign investors who bought in and thought, "Oh, I'll I'll jump out." Well, they'll be jumping out into Australian dollars. That'll be uh, taking a huge hit, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. think like there's there's no way around it. If you lower your interest rates, your dollars are gonna you're gonna turn your dollar into confetti. Yeah, that's so uh, it starts going into inflation, and then see things start moving into hyperinflation. Yeah, there's always. Uh, 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 equal and opposite reaction somewhere right mm -hmm. you can't just you can't just lower interest rates and, and think oh that's 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 how we'll fix everything no, no. there's an equal and opposite uh reaction so that's why people people think in canada oh we'll just lower interest rates and we'll fix everything no no, no. no. but in like uh resource uh uh export countries like uh australia exports a lot of raw materials well that's a good thing for them if they're for those industries if the if the dollar turns to confetti because then people will buy off them because it'll be dirt cheap. Well, there's there's a tiny problem with that. Yes, exports become more attractive, but there's a tiny problem. Australian mines are not owned by Australian uh, p people anymore. It's owned by a lot of Chinese investors bought up mines. Yeah, and yeah. So it's the same thing with real estate. If they try to get out of the dollar, mm -hmm. you know, it's fa it's fine for the people in. Like it's fine for the people in Canada too if we're money turns to confetti well it's a it's a very complicated thing but it is. um yeah it's it, australia is pretty interesting and it's and uh i made a, a video uh I about uh, race to the bottom uh a long time ago uh who's gonna who's gonna win the race australia or canada or china uh and it definitely looks like it's actually pretty darn close but it looks like australia is coming out ahead and Canada's coming up behind in China because we probably aren't getting super accurate information we don't know but it feels like uh, there's some things going on they're protesting or mm -hmm. they're uh, uh, the Chinese government is stopping developers from lowering their prices they just said no you can't do that well how are we gonna keep up real estate prices well we just won't allow you to lower them I mean if that's going on I mean, that's probably the tip of the iceberg about what's going on over there. It's probably a lot worse than we think. It's a lot of but, price, but pr price. It might rigging. be. A, it might be. It might be better. Oh, there's there's a question for you. Mm. What do you think about real estate investing? Do you right think now, it should be regulated? Ah. Uh, because here's the sense? thing for the Canadians, here's, a, here's like, the thing: like local citizens or for foreign investors? Um, uh, for both. So here's the thing. So real estate investing takes inventory out of the system right. that would normally be bought by people who would want to buy it and actually live in it. Right. So they end up having to rent from these people that bought. So the question is, and I'm on the fence, is that a good system where we have people, individuals who own 14 houses and then other individuals who can't get in because... Those other people own 14 houses. Well, I think there's enough supply right now in the market to feed the demand because of the with, with the people retrieving or, or retreating from Canada, and a lot of investors are trying to get their money out of Canada right now. It's 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 a big thing happening now. There's going to be a lot of supply on the market um, now, but back in the 80s and early 90s, everybody had their own home. Like a, it's very very you'd be very hard pressed to find someone that was renting um, in the early 80s. It was very hard to find someone that rented. Uh, right. The only people that back in the early 80s and 90s that rented were people that arrived to Canada from Portugal or Spain or or Italy, and they rented from a, a uncle for like six months until they got their own place. Because right. back in the day, all you had to do was get a good job and you could pay your place off in five, ten years, right? right. But now the position we're in, I think it's going to be – I think a lot of the people – will be able to buy because there's, there's an oversupply on the market now. The, the, the oversupply in the market is phenomenal, how much glut there is. Prices, when prices come down to, uh, to match incomes, 
I think people will have the opportunity to buy. Even the guy that owns the 14 homes, there's a very good chance he bought those homes at the wrong time or bought them when the market was going up and he might have to unload those properties himself, right? So if they leave the housing market on autopilot, which it should be, instead of this first line, first time home buyers loans and all this Mickey Mouse, what's that other Mickey Mouse thing they keep doing? First home time buyers loans and then they're doing interest only loans, all this crap. Or zero, zero, zero down and get your mortgage with zero down if you qualify to make the payments. That was pretty bad when they do that kind of crap. And a lot of people fed into this because they want to own or be part of society in a way, right? Because a mm -hmm. lot of people from the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s felt that they, they just were displaced if they didn't own. You know what I'm saying? That grew up yeah. in those times. <clears throat> like yeah, well, now. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, what some people were saying is if if the if the government can't do it properly they shouldn't do it at all right so if because they try to prop up real estate prices at the bottom and push down prices at the top and they always undershoot or overshoot it you that's what gives you the cyclical housing market if they could do it properly you'd have a constant you just have a a line that kind of went along with inflation right mm -hmm. you'd have and that would take away the stress out of the real estate market mm -hmm. because everybody's wondering if prices are going to go up and prices are going to go down. And that's kind of stressful for people. If the Canadian government knew what they were doing, they would be able to keep that uh, line straight. They would keep housing uh, going up along with inflation, but they can't. So the idea is, well, they should just stop trying. They should yeah, stop they should getting in there. They should leave the insurance, the, the, the auto insurance market alone because they're failing with ICBC. They should leave the housing market alone. They should leave a lot of things alone. There's too much government intervention. We don't need so much government. Government should not. If we kept the housing, if we kept the housing bubble, if we kept the housing on autopilot and let the government do its job and protect us from money launderers and people bringing in illegal money and all that stuff, we wouldn't have this problem today. Yeah, that's right. Well, they that's a whole nother story they totally botched that up i mean that's well they got information 20 years ago from the rcmp that there was a lot of money laundering going on 20 years ago and they were and the rcmp was asked to stand down well that's the point where people in government uh should be going to jail yeah like iceland yeah there's there's no way that that whole uh circus went on without somebody doing something illegal. Right. Blatantly, obviously, knowingly illegal. There's just no way. You can't have that much money filtered through. And someone that should have been watching, you know, it's uh, incredible. It it's incredible. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's, well, it, it it's around the world. It's known as the Vancouver model. That's That's going to stick, you know? That's that's a that's a moniker that's not going to go away, you know. That's well, it's, that. It's 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 like the, the sad part is these people walking in with hockey bags full of cash. How the heck are they not stopped or asked? What, sir? Why are you going into a casino with a hockey bag full of cash? Yeah. What's what's going on? That's here? that's what I'm saying. It's it's so obvious and ongoing that it has to be criminal that it wasn't stopped. Somewhere along the lines, there was within the government or the police or whatever body that was supposed to be taking care of it, there was abs there's no way that billions of dollars, billions of and that's on uh, on top of the housing market. How much money has gone through the housing market? It's tens of billions of dollars. Someone knew someone knew about it. Mm -hmm. Someone was hiding it. There's, a, there, I, in my mind, there's no way that that went on and there wasn't something illegal going on within the government. Oh, there was so much breach. There was so much corruption. So much avenues were paid off. Phenomenal. This makes like the Italian Sicilian mob in, in, in Chicago and New York look like a walk in the park. No, they should be taking notes. 
this is how it's done. This is how you this is how you do it in the billions, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, good talk, Mr. Mike. Yeah, we I should um, come on your show sometime. Let me know when you're available. I'll let you know when I'm not available. So guys, here's his channel here, Formafist. Lots of good lots of good content, tons of good content on here. He streams live very frequently. Uh, here he is here, and I'm just trying to see a couple of videos here. He's got lots going on here. Positive, negative forces, and the uh, here's the Australians are tough. Hope Australians are tough. Um, uh, talks about crypto. Talks about uh, realtors. Talks about patients in the market. Rented, renting versus buying. Lots of good stuff here. Oh, here, we are, here, here I am. Uh, Mike Martin's calls in. Ivan doesn't like it. Yeah, no one like a lot of people out there don't like me. You know, it's been it's been like it's been like this for years. So I got used to it after the fourth year I've been doing this. Does Ivan still come to your channel? No, I don't see him anymore. I think he gave <laughs> up. <laughs> I love Ivan. Yeah, he disagree. Think- he di- he disagrees with me one hundred percent. Of course, but he does. I like that. I like that. I yeah. I, I want to hear. Uh, people who disagree with me. Oh, I don't I, care I about I, Ivan, Ivan disagreeing with me, but when he wrote that thing... He's under... a bit saucy. He's yeah. a bit saucy. You know the better dwelling uh, warning? Mm-hmm. That was because of him. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite sure that that was because of him because he got a bit saucy in the comment section. Yeah, because he got pretty mad at me and he was talking about my house is worthless and then, you know, it was brought yeah. my wife into it and stuff like that. So I made a counter yeah. video. I, I made the video called Crazy Russian Guys Back. So I made a counter video on what he said. I actually showed the comments in the video. So I'm not making this up. And then no. he goes to YouTube and saying, oh, he's talking about me. Nah, well, I was, I was able to talk him down. And uh, sometimes, sometimes that's a good thing to be able to do. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm not going to apologize for him. He he uh, he uh, he can get a bit saucy. Yeah. Um, I have one question for you. Yeah, yeah. You do a video pretty much every day, right? Sure. Yeah. Sometimes three. Sometimes three. But pretty much without exception, you do a video every day. So I've got this bet with my friend. I don't know if you know about it. Yeah, so I I've saw got the this... video. You're betting that you could do a video a day for the next what? For the next year. Yeah. For the next calendar year. So we have a, a couple rules. Um, so it's uh, it's actually pretty challenging. I'm actually uh, impressed that you have been able to do it for so long. So what are your tips for doing a video every day? Well, here's the deal. You should do more vlogging videos like I do. Vlogging videos are nice. And sometimes, you know, when you're going through your day, you're doing your thing or heck, even when you're in the shower, something comes to mind. Well, you know, when you have the time, don't forget that thought and make a video about it. Mm. It's a kind of like, yeah, uh, vlogging stuff because uh, the, the video ideas come to you. Yeah. Steve the Plumber is asking me to talk about something he's said it a bunch of times what is it uh, he wants me to talk about uh please ask for if what is opinion on chinese capital outflows being restricted and the what the impacts are um what do you think about that i bet i've covered this many times uh, uh, the capital outflows from china and now with uh, Can- uh china's social credit score a lot of people are trying to get their money out and they're going to change it to 12000 a year into Canada because of Canada's conflict. And Spain, apparently Spain and a couple of other countries, uh, China is only, uh, only allowing 12000 a year instead of fifty five or fifty to Canada and Spain right now because they're in each other's crosshairs. And uh, yeah, and if you can't if you can't finance your your overseas properties, then you basically have to foreclose on them and that's what's been happening a lot of uh rich investors can't get the money out of the country and they're having a tough time and a lot yeah people- well there's there's a there's a lot going on there's so there's the australian um in australia there the chinese government through uh through uh through a bank i think it is you you've heard about it they're yeah. actually trying to take over the properties and sell them and uh, send the money back. You've got uh, restrictions on capital outflow. So the thing is, they're the they're getting it from both sides. So 
China doesn't want any more money leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty obvious. Well, they've Plus, had a massive runoff on their wealth in the last four exactly. years. Exactly. Right? So not only that, their, um, uh, their assets are going down, the, the, the real estate. So I don't know if they're borrowing against it. But on this side, we've got foreign buyer tax. We've got uh, the clampdown on uh, the money laundering. Like, at least now that the NDP is in government, they're actually looking at it. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's probably not stopped it, but it's put it, a huge, massive dent in it. Like, imagine you could just launder money to your heart's content in the open, and then suddenly even just people acknowledging it and looking at it that's a massive change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you've got m money, that that money train going across the Pacific is being stopped at both ends. Mm -hmm. So Steve the Plumber is asking my opinion on that. Well, it's, it's that, that gravy train is over for BC because most of that money was coming to BC. Well, so, the, what gave it away, what made it really worse is how they shadow flipped and they were shadow flipping homes. And one guy, so a guy in China would sell to his neighbor in China a house they have and they'd flip the house back and forth between each other 15, 16 times and they'd end up cleaning a couple of million, easy 15, 20 million dollars in Canada. Yeah, again, the amount of shady stuff that went on um, and you can tell how deep it is mm -hmm. uh, in that um, the report got squashed, mm -hmm. right? You remember that um, David Eby is is not happy about the the, the report on it, mm -hmm. and it just so happens that before it was going to be released, they accidentally released the name of an informant, and they can't release the report now at the risk of outing that informant or some not necessarily informant, but well, somebody involved in the case. So why don't you just black that out and yeah. send the report? So it seems very, that part was astonishing to me. That mm -hmm. was so shady, mm -hmm. so incredibly shady. It blew my mind. Yep. The fact that that report isn't coming out. So well, it's like, we know what's going on. People in Vancouver knew about it for decades it seems that's what they say. They say we knew about this for ten years, mm -hmm. and it, and um, I feel sorry for David E because he really wants to go after these people, but he can't. Mm -hmm. So they're finding a way to yeah. I I know what they're they're just yeah they're putting a, a prick in his bubbles what they're doing and uh, not allowing him to 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 conclude what he needs to do. I remember that I I you you even covered that didn't you? Yeah, I probably did. I while, say a lot of shit. A while's back, yeah. <laughs> a, while's, a while's back. All right. Uh, well, yeah, we'll do a show soon. I'll do I'll do one on your side. No problem. You let me know, and uh, we could do a, a little something, something. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Mike and the Knights this Saturday night, and uh, we're going to be talking about um, uh, for, uh, people foreclosing, foreclosures and defaults happening all over the world, and it's going to be a mass... A mass, a mass, a mass shutdown of everything. We'll see what happens with that. So, yeah, well, that'll be interesting. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. God bless. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. So, guys, that was Daniel at Formafist. Don't forget to subscribe to his channel. It, here it is, right here, Formafist. He's got lots of good, lots of good, lots of good stuff. Anyways, guys, I've been talking for two hours. I think it's time I, 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 um, I couldn't get Andrew Baker on the phone from Australia to give us an insight on what's happening with the uh, Royal Commission and what's happening with the uh, what's happening with the uh, interest only loans that are coming up to uh, that are coming up for um, re uh, renegotiation and see what happens with that and with New Zealand uh, also we got to get somebody back on the show we lost our two New Zealand uh, uh, anchors because they are they got new jobs and they were told not to come on the show so if you're in New Zealand and you want to be on the show, just um, let me know what you guys, if you want to be on the show, add me on Skype if you're in New Zealand. And London, the hours are really weird. It's like 5 in the morning in London right now, so it's really hard to get people on at this time. So anyways, guys, this will be up on re replay um, on the main channel. 
Guys, I'll be out of YouTube jail in another 10 more days, 8 days. So I'll be streaming from the main channel again. Hopefully they don't find a video. And anyway, let's go back to this real quick. Look at my old videos. Somebody saved these videos. I can't believe it. Look at this. I got to bring this up again. I'm sorry. Sydney Vancouver housing crash of 47% by 2016. I actually predicted that. That wasn't even an article. I predicted that because it was way, way too high. And then I did Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, debt prison. That was November 11, 2015. Look at that. In 2015, I'm talking about this. And then let's see if I keep going here. Um, yeah, oversupply coming in 2016. So I was a, f a few years behind on this. Oversupply coming in 2016. I was wrong. I was dead wrong. It oversupplies in 2018, 2019. Supply versus demand illusion. I've been talking about that with empty homes for years. And this one here, Sydney, Vancouver, Auckland, London. Massive housing correction, spring 2017. Toronto's not here because Toronto started to rally in, in late 2016. And this was about three quarters behind. So I, I can't believe somebody saved this material for me like or actually have it, had it backed up somewhere for me. Yeah, I can't believe it, man. Yeah, I'm in the YouTube gulag. I'll be out on the main channel. So we're going to have to, please, if you don't mind, guys, we need to um, uh, keep it PG on the other channel as much as possible because they're looking for reasons and anybody and their grandmother to find a way to uh, get me shut down on that. Um, yeah. So we're going to look in this. We're going to do some New Zealand through the week. And uh, a little bit of Australian housing talk through the week, too. Let me know what you guys think. Any articles, send them to me. I don't know why I'm getting music here. And anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you guys want, I hope this doesn't flag my channel. I don't know what the heck is going on. probably match that and then flag my video losers bunch of losers people have no life yeah we got to do a meet and greet guys yeah we have to do like uh, um kevin thompson and steve the plumber are going to do a live meet and greet on the channel so hopefully that goes through and uh, yeah that's wrap up that's for tonight guys saturday night don't forget to join me don't forget trends in the um, mike in the night Saturday night, and I was thinking of starting another night, one night when everybody's asleep. I want to do uh, uh, talk radio or talk talk for guys, kind of more of a guy thing. Uh, we'll do more of a, a guy thing on Monday nights. We'll talk about dating. We'll talk about divorce as this housing thing starts to get wrapped up in the next eight months to a year. It's going to start evaporating. And I'm going to run out of material. So we'll do guy talk, guy discussion on Monday nights, people talking. We'll do one week divorce. The next week, um, you know, what you need to do to meet that special someone. And I need you guys to participate and call in to make the show worthwhile. So I need people to call in for that. Yes. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. God bless. The comment section will continue until everyone gets off. Have a good night, and uh, yeah, good night.